Hey folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where it is time to get back to work on the Wild West boomtown of Calico. And this week's project is none other than the Calico Train Depot. Well, I am excited to get back to work on the western boomtown of Calico. Still lots to do over there. And uh, I have a kit here um, from my friend Chris Bond over at Full Circle Models. You might remember I've built a couple of his kits in the past, uh, just rolling stock kits. This is the first structure kit I've gotten from Chris, and I'm, uh, I'm excited to dig into this. It's called the Second Chance Depot. It's a small uh, O-scale uh, station, which uh, when I saw a picture of it uh, from Chris, I thought that would be perfect for my little town of Calico. Uh, I I'd, I'd actually plan to scratch build one very, very similar, with a very similar uh, design and footprint to this. So I thought, what the heck? He's got a kit. Save me a little time. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll dig into that next and see what's in the package. All right, let's see what's in here. Got your instructions. Oh, good, pictures. I like pictures. Oh, it's even better when they're right side up. Okay. Good, good. Really straightforward. So we got uh, looks like a sign board right here. This is all laser cut. These are laser cut parts, and it looks like he's using um, Titchy Train windows, which is a uh, a good option. Very nicely packaged, as usual, from uh, Full Circle Models. <clears throat> Laser cut wall pieces. Floor, looks again, once again, he's using some, uh, some um, illustration board. Looks, looks like 16th of an inch thick basswood. Okay. And we've got, looks like a detail pack here. That up. Hmm. Uh, doors, door frames from Titchy and windows from Titchy also. Get this stuff out. Laser cut uh, corbels and eave brackets and things like that. Cool, cool. Strip wood. Oh, real wooden shingles. Awesome. Really nicely packaged. Big old depot windows, nice. Okay, well, I'm going to um, peruse the instructions and I'm gonna know all this stuff, get it all lined up and um, see all the parts that I have to work with. Now, I don't know about you, but laying all of the parts out like this gives me a, a much better handle on um, everything that's in the kit and uh, how it all goes together. Uh, you know, here's the roof panels, the walls, uh, floor, platform, corner posts, doors and windows. But the only thing I didn't unwrap yet is all the small details because I don't want to lose any of those. Uh, the funny thing is this, this depot is really similar in size to the original um, Rainbow Ridge Depot that I scratch built. Actually, it was originally built for Thunder Mesa Town, and I replaced it with a larger model, so now it's in Rainbow Ridge. It's, so it has a real strong family resemblance, and once it's painted up, and I'll probably um, add a few extra details, like some gingerbread trim, stuff to make it look more like a, a Thunder Mesa Depot, I think, it, uh, I think it will fit in with the family of depots on the layout quite nicely. Looks like the uh, first job to do is to assemble a couple of uh, fixtures that are included in the kit, made of some uh, laser cut cardstock and illustration board. Uh, put those together. But before I do that, I wanted to mention a um, good habit to get into <laughs> when building a kit like this, especially one that doesn't come in a box. Uh, this one comes in a bag. I'm using an old kit box to keep all of the parts together. 
and pull them out as I need them to work on the uh, uh, the different assemblies in the kit. So let's set this aside for a moment and get to work on these. You can use, uh, says he recommends white glue. I prefer to use carpenter's glue. That's just a matter of personal choice. Really, the only critical thing is that they are the edges are all flush. So. Okay, and then this goes this way. I wonder if the cap lines up. Okay. I'm a big fan of uh, using fixtures and jigs and templates, as you know, if you've followed my builds. I often custom make uh, jigs and templates for my uh, my different projects. So I'm really appreciative that these things like this are included. Now I'm assuming that the, the difference in thickness of these materials is going to be important later on. Take that aside and this is basically just like a T-square. It doesn't need to be exactly centered but close enough. Okay. I'm good at close enough. And now we glue the subfloor to the base, white side up, making sure that the post holes all line up with the edges of it. This is, this is some a nice uh, Crescent Illustration board, which is a building material I like to use a lot myself. Put some weight on that, let that dry. Ah, that's a really good point. Uh, here in the instructions, uh, Chris makes a really good point of to tell you to sand the mating edges of these corbels. These are going to be on the, the sides. There's going to be one on each side of the uh, the posts, the upright posts. And oh, I think they actually go this way. And um, the thing about laser cut parts is, you know, the kerf from the laser it actually cuts at a slight angle uh, because of the way that the laser is focused. So it's not a straight 90 degree cut. It's just a slight angle. It's a wider on one side than it is on the other. Um, and the thicker the material is, the more noticeable that angle could be. And if you put laser cut kits together, you probably, you probably run into this yourself. So he makes a point of telling you to sand this edge so it fits flush against that post. And that's a really, really good uh, detail, really good point to, to add. Often uh, kind of glossed over in laser kits. Got some 400 grit. He recommends 220, but I've got some 400 here on my, uh, on my uh, piece of glass. Doesn't take much. Get these nice and straight. These pieces are very delicate too, and I don't want to break them. I'm being uber careful using some tweezers. Now the depot walls are made from some nice uh, milled O-scale board and batten siding. Um, but in order for the windows and doors to fit correctly and for the roof tabs to slot in to the roof panels, you have to go in and remove uh, a little bit of the battens, and that's not hard to do. You can do it with a with a hobby knife. Uh, I'm I'm using a an exacto knife with a with a chisel blade in it. Just makes it a little bit easier. You could probably use a a straight razor too, a straight razor blade. Just be careful. Now I can use these uh, these fixtures that we made earlier to assemble the posts. And each one gets a corbel on each side. This makes it a lot easier. So, again, being careful not to, to break these corbels. Anytime you've got something going across grain like that, it's uh, real easy to snap the pieces if you press too hard. So, gotta have a light touch. Now I need to put this brace 
the rear side of the platform gable. Now each of the posts gets these little uh, pads. Just slide up in here underneath the corbels. Which I think is a nice little bit of extra detail. A little more dimensionality, a little fancier. Well now, according to the instructions, it's time to um, paint all the parts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to get a coat of uh, light gray primer on all of these first. And then um, I think the walls are going to be painted kind of a, a, um, a creamy off-white, sort of a antique white. And all the trim pieces, the windows and the trim pieces and the doors will be a dark kind of hunter green. And that will match um, all the other depots on the Thunder Mesa layout. I think it'll look pretty nice. So. Let's get some primer on these right now. And this is where the depot is going to be located. And uh, the original mock-up I had here took up a little bit uh, more room than the model I'm building now. But that's cool. I, I, I like that it's actually a little bit smaller. But I do want to uh, increase the size of the platform a little bit. I want to make the platform a little bit bigger to fill this space between these two tracks. So I'm taking a couple of measurements. So it's going to be kind of a trapezoidal shaped platform when all is said and done. I also want to uh, raise the platform up so it's, you know, not just sitting on the ground. So I've got some six by 12 joists that I'm going to use to do that. And this will kind of kill two birds with one stone. plank over the whole thing and no one will be the wiser. I also want to add a few more uh, joists underneath here. Just some cross pieces. Not in prototypical locations, by the way, just where I think it needs it for a little more strength. Just like that. That'll work. I've given the primer a chance to dry completely overnight. So now I am ready to get some paint, the final color on these, uh, on these walls. And uh, I'm going to airbrush it. I'm going to mix up a kind of an antique white using some uh, Vallejo Air white and some Vallejo Air dark brown. And if you've never mixed up, a color like this, um, it's actually pretty easy. Let's start with the white. Uh, it's a really good idea to use a clear container, like glass, like this. And I just want a couple of drops of brown in here. Let's try that. That's about three drops. A 
a little red. So I'm going to add some yellow to it. Four drops of yellow. And that should get us close to the color that we want, I think. There we go. That's the kind of antique white that we want right there. Mixing color is really not that hard. It does take a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of experience to know how much to put in. Uh, my best bit of advice is start with a very small amount and work your way up. If you're adding uh, other colors to white, now we'll just put a little bit of that in the spray cup. Put the lid on the rest. This is a Pache double action. Um, is it Pache or Pache? I've always pronounced it Pache. I've probably been pronouncing it wrong all my life. Double action airbrush. I'm going to test this on the back of this piece here first. That'll work. All right. I'm going to try and get even coverage. Probably going to take a couple of coats. Well, I apologize for the fan noise and the compressor noise, but you know it is what it is when you're running an airbrush. So now, I've got the basic color on there. I'm going to add a little, uh, little weathering. I've got some Vallejo Dark Earth. I'm just going to put a little bit down along the bottom edge here. This is where having a double action airbrush um, is handy because I can control both the amount of paint and the amount of air at the same time. I'm just kind of slowly creeping up on this from the bottom. There we go. I don't want to overdo that. That's plenty. Okay. Now for the trim pieces and the doors and windows and all that, I'm going to try some uh, Vallejo Olive Green. That's green. Greens are scary, man. Well, I think we did a pretty passable job on the painting, and I think this is going to look really handsome when it's all assembled with the uh, two-tone color scheme. Look at that. Yeah, love the green against the cream walls. That's uh, just a really nice classic look. Uh, but now, while I'm still this this paint is still a little bit tacky, I want to let that uh, dry completely, and while I'm waiting. I can go ahead and stain all of the uh, all of the planks for the platform and the shingles. And I'm going to use my um, good old uh, India ink and alcohol mixture. This is just 70% uh, uh, rubbing alcohol with a few drops of uh, of uh, India ink in it. it. Looks like we've got some um, nice peel and stick shingles here. With the double stick on the back. Also some cap shingles, which is a really nice detail to include. I'm just going to use a brush. Trying to vary it a little bit here and there. 
It's not too uniform. And this looks like it's going on pretty dark, but it'll dry a shade lighter than this, so I'm not worried about that. And now I've got all of these uh, planks for the platform. And before I stain them, I want to bring out the grain a little bit and add a little weathering. So run my razor saw over each and every one of them. Well, maybe not every one. A little variation there. This will soak up the, the uh, stain a little better and uh, make it look like they've been out in the weather for a while. Stain these, I can just pour my stain in here. Drop it all in there. Kind of swish them around a little bit. I'm excited to start uh, putting this thing together, but um, a couple other little bits of business I need to take care of first. Uh, one thing I need to paint these interior walls. I'm not going to go crazy on the interior. It's not going to be, you know, super detailed. Just just enough that you can look in the windows and see that there's something inside. Um, goes along with my personal philosophy of not modeling things that don't show. But I don't want the interior walls to be primer gray, so I'm just giving them a quick brush coat of uh, this is what is Apple Barrel Territorial Gray, uh, inexpensive craft paint, which is just fine for this, craft acrylic. Now I'll take some of this uh, Apple Barrel Khaki, a stiff brush, semi stiff. 99% of the paint off. Dry brushing on these window frames, doors. Brings out the detail and adds a little bit of weathering. Takes a very light touch if you do dry brushing and kind of build it up rather than if you get a big smear of it on there all at once, you've got too much paint on your brush. Now something like these doors, I'm going to start down at the bottom of the door and kind of fade it up. If you look at doors, you see there's always more weathering down towards the bottom, especially exterior doors. Now why not do this with an airbrush, right? Well, I'll tell you why. Dry brushing has an advantage over airbrushing for something like this because the bristles are hitting the high spots, uh, in this case on the molded plastic, and that's what's bringing out the detail. Whereas an airbrush, it's all just going to go, it's going to go everywhere. Well, now it's time for a little assembly, and the first thing is to attach these corner posts to the end walls, and these are these notched uh, corner posts, which I gotta be honest, I have not seen these since um, the old Campbell kits. Remember those in the plaid boxes? They had this uh, milled piece that created these nice trim corners uh, when it's all put together. And you know, it's uh, still a great solution and still works, so let's go with it nice thing about them is it gives you a very strong structure without having to add a bunch of interior bracing. And uh, it's got all these gluing surfaces on it. The more gluing surfaces, the better. And I've done a rough trim uh, to the roof angle. I'll clean that up when, uh, when everything's together. The next piece to add is the floor, which gets glued right onto the base right there. But before I put it in, I'm going to stain it using some uh, Minwax Early American. I'm trying to get a nice even coat of wood glue on this.
Now it's time to start glazing the windows. There is some laser cut glazing that, uh, that comes with a kit, but I've um, opted to replace it with some, some thicker acrylic that I have. A little closer to the scale thickness of glass, I think. Um, I'm just using some Eileen's tacky glue. You could use canopy glue too. That's a really good choice for this job. Of course, the trick with the uh, glazing windows is always to be able to glue the acrylic in without the glue showing. These uh, titchy windows do give you a nice little lip after gluing. I use a little wooden toothpick to put the glue in there. Try to get it where I want it. And it's better to have a smear of glue than a blob. And that's because when you press the glazing down, the blob of glue will squeeze out and be visible. And I'm doing the final trim of the uh, corner posts. Put a piece of 6x12 underneath here uh, so I don't uh, split it as I'm cutting it with my hobby knife. Just trying to match this uh, this corner or this uh, the pitch of the roof right here. Okay, and just like that, it is starting to look like a thing. I'm just uh, test fitting this in here. I haven't uh, haven't glued these walls into place yet. Just making sure everything fits. Now I need to glue the uh, the windows and the door frames into the walls. Just using some thick CA for that. A little dab will do you. Well, now we're about at the point I uh, get to an any kit where I stop following the directions and <laughs> go off on my own just a little bit. Um, I'm just skipping ahead here. Actually, so far, this is not, that's nothing against the directions. Directions are, are fantastic. Uh, I just like to do my own thing. So I'm skipping ahead and I'm going to uh, start planking the platform. I think that'll make it actually a little bit easier going forward, finishing up the model. These are uh, like some two by, um, two by eight planks. This is one of those things that's gonna take a minute, so um, probably time for a time lapse. got the platform pretty much done now, uh, but I want to add um, nail hole detail. And theoretically, there'd be joists about every two feet. So I've made some measurements here. You probably can't see the lines, but the pencil marks, but uh, so every two feet. I've also made sure that these cut boards line up um, with where those uh, joists would be. And now I have a little nail in my pin vise kind of bent. <laughs> I'm just going to go uh, right along and put uh, two nail holes in each board every two feet. So I'm, uh, I'm deviating from the instructions as I mentioned. Uh, but the main reason that I'm deviating from the instructions, not just for the platform, uh, it's because I want to have a removable roof on the model. And from here on out, the instructions have you pretty much build the structure into the roof. Um, but what I want to do is build the structure 
on the platform and have the roof be able to pop off if I need to access the interior. So that's what we're going to be doing going forward. So the plan here is to um, kind of put this whole thing together on the base, but leave uh, one side open um, so I can add some details to the interior, kind of like a dollhouse. Uh, kind of, this is the dollhouse technique. <laughs> and then I'll button the whole thing up and uh, build a removable roof that'll fit down on top. Um, I want to add uh, lights, so I want to have, uh, I'm going to need to drill a hole through, right through the platform to bring wiring up from underneath. And um, the first thing I want to do right now is add some blinds to the windows. And the kit comes with this nice uh, heavy paper, which I think will make some nice blinds. Do uh, something like this. I'm going to piece a one by two. Basically, just as a hanger uh, for the blinds. And then what I can do, I think, add a little bit more glue and just roll it over so I can have blinds of different lengths. So uh, that's kind of what we're going for. Make those for uh, all four windows. Now, I think. Let's start putting all this together. Start with the end walls. Move those into the base. Get all the way down there flush. Here, press that up against the floor. All right, there's our little dollhouse. Now I can go in and add some details to the interior. I'm going to build a little uh, closet here out of some just some illustration board. I'm not going to have really any features to it, but it's just to hide the wiring that's going to come up into the uh, into the ceiling here. Now I'm feeding some uh, 28 gauge wire up through the little hole I made. I'm going to use some, uh, some foam tape, some double stick tape, to uh, hold it to the wall right here. I'm trying to give myself more than I think I'll need. That was a good idea. Okay. Here's the little closet I was talking about, made out of illustration board, and I'm just giving it a coat of that same uh, territorial beige that I used for the interior of the depot. Now, let's glue this into place. I want to model the door on this side open and the door on this side closed. So this will also help to disguise my little closet there. So that's the first detail I think I want to install. Just like that. Next I've got the uh, station agent's desk, which is pretty big. <laughs> Pretty big for um, such a small depot. I think we can make it work. Basically, I just want to be able to see it in the windows here. So when you look through the front, you'll see it right there. And it'll make sense across from the other door where people would come in to buy tickets. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did go ahead and... Uh, paint all of these details off camera. I'm sorry I can't include every single step, but 
That seemed like a good one to do off camera. And I have a typewriter to write up various train orders and such. And for those who are wondering, yes, typewriters did exist back in those days. In the uh, 19th century, um, Mark Twain quite famously wrote uh, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer on an early typewriter. So they were around. I've got to have a desk lamp. Yeah. The old station clock should probably be right about here. You can see it through the door. Yep, good. And the last thing for the interior is ubiquitous pot belly stove in its blue enamel coffee pot. Got to have that. This will be right in the middle between the opposite door and the window. And then I'll adjust the stove pipe to match the ceiling when I put that in. Now this uh, fine fellow is uh, none other than Augustus Merriweather, Gus to his friends. He's the station agent here in uh, Calico. Uh, for the Thunder Mesa Mining Company Railroad, and um, just finished painting him up. He's actually a, a, a figure from Knuckle Duster Miniatures, uh, if you're not aware of their fine line of uh, uh, white metal figures. You should definitely check them out uh, for O scale and other scales. Uh, this is a Mayer figure, and uh, I, I promise one of these days I will do a video on how I paint figures. I've had a lot of people ask. And, uh, you know, I haven't done it because, um, I, you know, I don't consider myself that great at it. <laughs> I, I, I get by. Uh, there are a lot of people that are better at it than I, I am. But eventually I will do a video on figure painting. But for now, this guy is going to go and live in the depot. And he's got a little pin in the bottom of his foot here. And that goes into a hole that I've drilled into the floor. But I'm also going to use just a little bit of glue on the bottom of his feet. Keep him from moving around. I'm going to position him so he's kind of in the doorway right here. The structure comes with a laser cut ceiling, which is a really nice feature. Um, it's made out of illustration board, which is probably the way I would have done it if I was scratch building it. Um, right now I'm drilling a hole through the middle of it to accept a uh, three millimeter yellow LED that will represent kerosene lantern light inside of the structure. Um, to support the roof or the ceiling, I've added some uh, moldings around the inside of the walls here, 10 feet up from the floor. Uh, and so the ceiling will just slide down in and sit right on top of that and remain removable. So the light will be mounted right inside in the center of the roof like that. I want to wait for the glue to dry on this. I think it's safe. Go ahead and put this fourth wall on. Just thinking that uh, before I button this up and put the ceiling in place, it's probably a really good idea to check and make sure this LED works. And it does. Excellent. These are uh, little three millimeter yellow LEDs. I get both flickering and non-flickering. I buy them in bulk, usually on eBay or Amazon, places like that. And uh, I like to get the ones that are already uh, uh, pre-wired with a, uh, a, uh, a resistor already soldered to the, uh, to the lead. So all you got to do is hook them up and they're ready to go. Very conveniently, this uh, roof that comes with the kit has two holes in it. And that's uh, so you can uh, position the stove on either side. It's for the uh, smoke jack. Um, it's also very handy for these wires. I'm just going to put the wires right through there. Bring 
this down and also align it with the uh, stove pipe. Just drops right in like that. Boom. Now I just need to hook these up and I can get started on the roof. Now to make this removable roof possible and also to uh, dress things up a little bit, make it look more a little fancier like the other depots on the layout, I've created uh, some laser cut parts. Um, these are some end brackets that will go on each end of the roof like that, which will, uh, you know, be decorative, but also um, apply, uh, uh, supply some more strength um, for the roof. Uh, and then, of course, I've got this, which is just some nice gingerbread, some laser cut gingerbread, which is the same pattern that's over on the, uh, the Thunder Mesa Depot. So the first thing I need to do, this, these are a little sandwich of uh, 1 16th inch thick MDF. You put the two pieces together and you get uh, basically a, a six by six beam. A nice little decorative touch in the middle there with the half circle. So let's glue those up and then I can start assembling the roof. Also added a little one by four molding on here just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension. And the plan here is to get uh, the roof all together and then paint it to match the rest of the depot. Once all of the pieces are in place. And to add some more strength to the roof, I'm adding a putting in a six by six uh, ridge pole along the top here, but I can't run it the whole length uh, because it has to uh, allow for the walls. So I've been applying the rafters to the underside of the roof, uh, we have the long rafters in, but now in order to put the short rafters in and make sure they're in the right place, I need to put the roof on temporarily. And uh, then I'm just gonna go in and put each of these short rafters glued to the roof in, in you know, gluing it to the roof while making sure it's going into the proper slot. That way everything will align when the roof is taken on and off. This is a lot of extra work um, to make a removable roof like this. And, you know, if you don't want to do it, I don't blame you. Uh, <laughs> I find it worthwhile. This is the, this is the real little fiddly part. Getting up under here. So this is gonna take a minute. Well, that took a little doing, uh, but I've got all the rafters on there. And now I can uh, get a coat of primer and then paint to match the rest of the structure. So now with the underside of the roof painted and finished, I should be able to just slide these posts down into the holes put the roof on and finish the rest of this with the roof in place Put on the trim and the shingles and all that stuff. I'm not going to glue these posts down into the holes that way. If I need to, I should be able to lift the whole roof off. I'm going to give you a, a close up look at one of the corbels here. It goes on, uh, there's one for each corner of the depot, as well as the uh, upright posts. And uh, they have these little pads or blocks on each end that complete the, uh, the assembly. Um, uh, the instructions call for you to add those after these are glued in place. I found it a lot easier to 
build the entire thing as one assembly and then glue the whole thing in. So that's what I'm doing now. So I just need to glue these four corbels into place. And that's the last of the little fiddly bits of the kit. The kit includes some uh, nice looking peel and stick shingles. So I am going to use those. It's got starter strips, which is always nice. Lifts up that bottom row of shingles so it looks prototypical. So, start putting these on. Little by little. And I think once again, It'll be time for a time lapse, don't you? Well, I got the roof completely shingled, except for some uh, cap shingles up at the top. But I'm going to wait until I put the uh, the gingerbread trim on before I add those. Um, I always appreciate it when a kit has extra parts, extra shingles. So I was able to finish the whole roof and ha still have uh, some left over, which is really nice. So now what I'm going to do is attach this uh, little crest, this gingerbread to the top. What I like to do is I take that, um, this is a 25 thou laser board what I, that I cut it out of. Uh, and I take that and cement it to a um, piece of scale one by four, which gives me a nice um, little uh, positive grab, a little shelf to glue to the top of the roof there. Right at the crest here. So now I just need to finish the roof with a row of cap shingles on each side, but right up against the, the base of that uh, decorative trim. And there's really no fast way to do it. One at a time. Just putting the last shingle on. Ha! Huh. Well, that took uh, about an hour or so. Uh, and now oh, I can add the smoke jack. And this is a, a plastic casting that comes with the kit. And I've painted it a flat black. Just uh, turn it until it's properly oriented. Well, now I'm just uh, working on the depot signs. I've got some that I printed on my own uh, little inkjet printer. Um, but this, the kit comes with the uh, sign boards and frames, which are all laser cut and peel and stick, which is real nice. I already painted the frames uh, the same dark olive green as the rest of the trim. Um, now, usually I don't like to use tape for things, but I think in this case, we can make an exception. I think this will work just fine. Using some double stick tape on the sign backing board. And then take the sign itself, the printed sign. Lay that on one end. Square as I can get it. And just trim off the rest of the excess tape around the edges. Okay. Take the sign frame off the backing. Then go around from behind with a small brush and just paint the end, the uh, edges so everything matches. Now each end of the depot gets a sign. This one will go right above the window. 
Alright. And the sign says Calico elevation 2,283 feet. And if you're wondering, yes, that is the actual elevation of Calico Ghost Town in uh, Southern California. The kit also comes with this um, nifty little bench, which I painted to match the trim on the depot. The instructions, he shows it under here, under this window, but I'm going to put it out here. So I have other plans for under there. And then I've got a cool brass spittoon. Not actually brass, white metal, but they painted to look like brass. Put this. Uh, it's a good place for a spittoon, don't you think? Now I just want to do some very light weathering with some colored chalks. Um, I just have to remind myself that uh, Calico is a boom town, so everything in it should look fairly new. And I think we can put a little soot coming down from the smoke jack. That sign looks way too clean. Okay, that's probably good. I don't want to overdo it. I like the new looking roof. I'll do it like that. And I think the rest of the detailing can be done over at the layout. This is bamboo skewer to poke the wiring all the way down through. It's going through some plywood and some layers of foam. I notice I also built a couple of wings out from the main platform. Helps me position the depot and also it would need that. It would need a little bit of extra area to load and unload. We'll add some uh, barrels over on this side. Barrels are always a nice detail in a western scene. That's a casting from Bar Mills. Maybe over here we got a fellow that's Getting ready to take his last train ride. Those boom towns could be dangerous places, you know. All kinds of ways to meet your maker. But I don't want to send the poor soul off into the great unknown all alone, so I'm going to create a chicken to keep him company. Okay, we'll put a bench under the awning here, but this is um, this is one of uh, Crescent Creek models. Uh, depot benches, aka Waltz Bench from Griffith Park. Sack of mail. Mail contract kept a lot of these old railroads in business for a long time. Now I know postal regulations say that bag is not supposed to be left unattended, but don't worry, the station agent's right around the corner there. So everything's okay. Here's an interesting platform detail that's really easy to make. Um, a train uh, schedule board, a uh, chalkboard on an A-frame. And I made this just with some uh, printed paper, some cardstock, and some O-scale 2x4s. A small detail that probably every depot platform should have is one of those little step stools. Just to Help people get on and off the trains. Well, I could spend a lot of time adding more details and I probably will uh, going forward. I'd like to have especially some more figures on the platform, but those take a little bit of time to uh, paint and detail and you know, a few other things here and there, some crates and luggage and stuff like that. But for now, I think we're going to call the Calico Depot done.
Well, folks, I want to thank you all for coming along with me on the build of the Calico Train Depot. I hope you all enjoyed the ride. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa or see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. Or if you really like what we're doing here on the channel, you can do what these nice folks did and head over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, everybody, and uh, adios for now.